Bud. Now it's time for Toker Talk Radio, the voice of the marijuana nation. What are you people? On dope? Or you can tow. I am here. Uh, or you can talk. I experimented with marijuana and didn't inhale. Or you can talk and talk. Ten federal criminal penalties for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana. While we talk about toke on Toker Talk Radio. So, by the way, when it comes to pot, you know, if you're 40 years old, you live in a log cabin in Oregon, you got 12 giant pot plants in your backyard, have a ball. Live from beautiful Portland, Oregon at Rolla J Studios. Cannabis. Plus your calls live at 971-533-7111. They're walking on their pants with their cap on backwards, listening to the end of a man, the Snoopy Snoopy Poop Dog. What's to keep somebody from getting all potted up on weed and then getting behind the wheel? Gateway theory doesn't work. It's a reality. How long is it real? Don't tease me. We're locking up people that take a couple of puffs of marijuana, and, and the, the next thing you know, they got 10 years. And now, here's your host, the guru of ganja graphics, the sultan of sativa statistics, and the worst nightmare of a reefer mad prohibitionist. A polite, perspicacious, productive pothead with a propensity for PowerPoint. Radical Russ Belleville. Oh, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Toker Talk Radio. It's Monday, June 10th, 2013. I know it's 420. Well, I'm in. I hope it's 420. We're here. We're also going to talk about today. We're just winding up here. Recovering from the Dallas-Fort Worth Normal production of the Texas Regional Normal Conference. What great activists they've got here in Texas. You know, I was talking to them to someone the other day about how you've got people like uh, Sean McAllister and and Carly Duran and Cheyenne Weldon and Cliff Duvall. Boy, that would be a great leadership team for a national organization, much less just Texas being represented in four of its, uh, what, eight or nine chapters, 12 chapters they've got now, I think. I'm wearing a T-shirt today that was given to me by UNT Normal, University of North Texas. I believe that's Denton, Texas, I think. Uh, But thank you very much for all the gifts and all of the great hospitality i've received here in texas uh i was allowed to MC most of the uh the parties the after parties gave me an opportunity to get up on the mic and uh, inform people educate people kind of rally them build some activism spirit also uh got to do two presentations which went very long <laughs> far longer than the time i was given but they they let me go long with them so i appreciate that we'll be bringing you video of one of my presentations the box canyon 2013 my update on the on the uh changing landscape of medical marijuana politics uh we'll have that video process tonight i'll get it uploaded for brian the red tomorrow speaking of brian the red hey brian the red how you doing uh, i'm doing all right you know libra made her she's a harsh mistress <laughs> so. you know i and i got in so late here i was in the uh in the hotel till like 1 uh before i checked out and i had everything packed to uh, check out like at 11 like usual but everything ran till ran a little bit late so i got late setting up here and didn't have time to check in on Liebermater. and oops i messed up some programming huh oh uh, well no not so much messed up it's just there's been some adjustments like you said dr mitch is now on mondays so we've got to change the uh the back end on a couple of the playlist entries but not a real problem. We're doing it on the fly. And, you know, don't stress the, the bandwidth thing either. Like we told people on our last show at Roller J, you know, if I can get access into the studio and you can get some kind of call in line, we'll have a show. That's right. Yeah. We'll at least at least have an audio show. And I'm finding with the, uh, the T-Mobile 4G when I go out to these remote events that it'll handle enough bandwidth for audio. So uh, coming up when we go see the FNAs on uh, when I'm out with the FNAs on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in Arizona, uh, tune in at night. I guess it's uh, Arizona's on, well, they don't do daylight savings, so they're on Pacific time. So it'd be, oh, you know, bar time, probably like 8, 9, 10 o'clock uh, Pacific. We'll also be recording a lot of this stuff i'll be recording a lot of it on video so we'll bring it to you on future episodes of the russ belville show you can also check out my youtube channel youtube.com slash radical russ also want to thank all the new listeners and new supporters and fans people that i met in fort worth i got to talk to a lot of young college age people which is really exciting uh and uh, a lot of older people as well who had a lot of questions 
about the medical utility of cannabis. Uh, they, they had so many questions and they want to know so much about what was going out on uh, in our West Coast states. So, uh, But they got nothing to fear here. Uh, they're doing really, really good here in Texas. They're getting a lot. They got a, a bill finally out of a committee, uh, which is the a first. You know, the, these bills, you know, they don't have the um they don't have the same kind of initiative uh petition that we have in the western states in fact they have a law in texas you know there's a lot of states that don't have statewide initiatives right but they still have municipal initiatives you know like you know we want to have a city initiative to you know designate a dog park or something right there's a lot of cities that have something like that in texas they have that you know cities can make their own laws so it was suggested like what has been done in Arkansas and Massachusetts and many other states is that local uh, activists would work to get a city initiative for lowering the priority of marijuana offenses or decriminalizing in the city or making them a municipal court offense instead of a, a, an actual criminal court offense, all sorts of things that have been done in other, in other cities. But in Texas, they actually passed a law. The legislature passed a law that said you couldn't use the municipal bond or mun the municipal initiative system for anything relating to cannabis. Just cannabis, that's it. You can still use the municipal system, you can still make up your own rules, but you cannot make up any sort of municipal uh, election, uh, municipal initiative that reduces the penalties for cannabis, that makes it a low priority, that does anything that you'd want to call activism. And, and that's just another form of discrimination, right? There. Absolutely. Hey, uh, we got to take a break here. So when we come back from break, we'll talk a little bit more about Dallas-Fort Worth and what's going on in the future. Stick around. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belton Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belton Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. The Law Offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak to my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707 707- 829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com Okay, this is the winner right here Y'all now tuned in to Mr. Joel Christopher <laughs> Ortiz, baby J-O-E-L-L-O-R-T That's the name of the future I got the game in the stoop I'm having fun with it I got my knife in the door Now I'm a run with it Son did it That's the talk on my block now My, what's good? Ladies, stop now. They give me, give me that groupy love. They can hate like they only vote the do because what? You think it's only because I rap? Nah, nah, I ain't gonna front. Probably is because I rap, but fuck that. <laughs> I gotta take it how it come. I'm fat and fat. I rap the clothes off they back. It's smack they fat. Attack the back of their beautiful body. Shorty like that wasn't nothing you should do to some body. Shorty right. Well, listen, my what's done is done. I had fun. Put on your clothes. It's time to go. One, let's go. My life is crazy. All I do is smoke, drink, and cut, cut. Get pinch, y'all. Throw a little more haze in that backwood. 
hypnotic in that brown cognac. Ugh, got me feeling like Lou Ferrigno, Bill Bixby. Oh, yeah, that's uh, Fusion Unlimited with Smoke, Drink, and Cut. Street version. Right on, right on. Sounding yeah. good out there. You know, got to bob your up head. I was bobbing my effing head out here, and I was bobbing my effing head all weekend listening to the F and A's. Like, you know, for the longest time, uh, I've said, you know, if I could, if I could have had my dream band that I could have been in ever, like, you know, just no, you know, wish fulfillment kind of thing, uh, it would have been Earth, Wind, and Fire, right? I love that kind of horn-driven, funky kind of sound. And, and, and one of the things I like about the F and A's is that horn-driven, funky sound. Although it's not a lot like, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire. It's more of a kind of that new reggae that new poppy kind of i don't know if there's is there a word for that brian do they have a word for that new reggae ish kind of pop music you know uh, i'm not you know personally sure you know just uh it it's kind of started it kind of started with i think slightly stupid it started yeah, evolving yeah. The, yeah, sublime. the genre sublime did a little bit of it too they dipped into the reggae genre you know pulling pieces out and uh slapping it into their music and you know, some of it lines up really well, I think, with some of the newer beats and uh, the old the old rhythms, you know. Yeah, but, it's uh, it's really cool. I love these guys. They're fun guys. And an interesting thing about the FNAs, there's a six-man band. Only three of them smoke pot. And so you know, the drummer, Valenti there, who's playing drums and keyboards at the same time, <laughs> oh, my God, uh, doesn't smoke pot. I, I don't know who the other two non-pot smokers are. But it didn't matter, right? They were just there having a good time partying. And, and they all, even the non-pot smokers, feel very strongly in support of ending adult marijuana prohibition. They're big supporters of DFD, DFW Normal. And that's so important as we go on this tour and as we try to educate people is, is you know, we don't need to educate us, the 12, 13% of people that smoke pot. And certainly, you know, those of us listening to this, uh, this, this uh, stream here and this podcast are, are much better informed on this issue than the average public is. But like Keith Strop says, you know, there's only about 12% of the American public that smokes pot on a regular basis. So that's seven out of eight people that we got to convince, you know, that have no personal stake in this. But part of doing that is to show them they do have a personal stake in it, right? You got a friend or a family member or some, a kid, you get somebody's going to be affected by this drug war eventually. And the indirect costs that happen to people through the increase in our health care, the, the worsening of our environment, uh, it, lots, of, lots of impacts that happen to everyone, the security of our nation, the, our civil liberties, there's so many things that are sacrificed in this war on drugs. That's part of what we're doing here, trying to make it so that people have a place to turn to get this information so that there is a place on the Internet that's about marijuana news and and review and reform and activism, not just about marijuana. There's a lot of shows on the internet about marijuana. We're specifically about changing these laws. All right, so I uh, wanted to just talk a little bit more as well about uh, some of the things that went here on here in DFW Normal. And one of the things I got to give them mad props on is the quality of the artists, uh, the musicians that they had playing at these events. Of course, I've gone on and on about the FNAs. But some of these other artists that we're going to be playing throughout the rest of the week are just phenomenal players. Uh, there was an acoustic duo that played. Let me see if I can get my notes up here uh, for the name of the band, because I, I forget off the top of my head here. But uh, where did I put that? Joshua, was his name Joshua? Let's see. I think that was the name. Yes, Joshua Mather. Oh, yeah, I remember. I was, I was thinking Marshall Mather. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Joshua Mather uh, is the singer-songwriter, and he had his friend there playing uh, lead guitar with him. We'll be playing some of that music coming up here pretty soon. We've also got a band that was called Radsha that we will bring you some music from, and Mix Magic, another great band that they had playing. So uh, we'll bring that coverage coming up on future episodes here of Toker Talk Radio all throughout this week while I'm on the road with the FNAs. Now, being that we're on the road this week, uh, of course, it is always my goal to bring us a show every day, every weekday, Monday through Friday. Uh, but we may be in a van traveling across Texas. <laughs> and whether or not there may be Internet coverage in the vast expanses of the Lone Star State is yet to be determined. So <laughs> that's why I'm going to work real hard tonight and get a whole bunch of video processed so that I've got a whole bunch of stuff on tap 
So if Brian and the Red and I can't get in touch, he's got videos he can slap in for us to have a, a new show. So, Brian, I'm kind of springing that on you, but uh, you know how we roll here. We, we do it live. Oh, yeah. We roll downhill, uphill, every ditch direction we want, you know. <laughs> so, uh, But as long as we keep rolling, you know. Uh, and also, uh, Russ, so just a side note, you know, if you want to look up your news stories uh, and then just call in on your phone, Oh, There's an yeah. idea too, because you're doing just audio anyway. That's right. We could always cell phone it. That that's a good idea. Okay, so plan A is Skype video call. Plan B is Skype audio. Plan C video is video cell phone. video video video. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and plan D is a bunch of uploaded a bunch videos. Of uploaded All right. videos. Okay. All right, we got it. That's how we roll here. You know. Uh, also, we've got some uh, presentations that I'll be uploading as well. A very informative speak. Uh, this was another thing about this uh, conference is the speakers that they had. Uh, very, very good speakers. Eric Altieri from Normal gave a great update on the progress of legalization and what's been happening in the past five, six years that has made this the best time in history to be a marijuana reform activist. Larry Talley from uh, which. Which one? I, one of the normal chapters in Texas. I'm not sure which one, but Larry Talley, uh, retired U.S. Navy, uh, was with Leap as well, I think, and he great, gave a, a great talk as well. Jamie Bellagia, he's the 420 dude. You can check out 420dude.com. He's a DWI lawyer, uh, works with alcohol and marijuana. He's the one who sponsors the San Antonio Normal Smart Car, the one that's got the. Uh, the full vinyl covering with all the marijuana facts on it. A, he was there to give a speech. It was great on uh, DUIs and how to avoid them. The DUI dude. DUI dude. That's right. All he's right. DUI dude and 420 dude. All right. <laughs> yeah. So he he's got a great uh, presentation. We got Rob Campia's presentation from Marijuana Policy Project. Uh, he gave a short speech on on their plans for the upcoming uh, legalization uh, the legalization movement and. Uh, Cheyenne Weldon, the executive, the new executive director of Texas Normal out there in Austin, uh, she gave a great speech. There was also, and this is something, you know what, uh, Brian, I was really glad to see this because I think this is an idea that actually came from Oregon. They had a hemp fashion show. Oh my gosh. Like we have every single year at both the Oregon Medical Cannabis Awards uh, held at the World Famous Cannabis Cafe and... Uh, sponsored by the world famous cannabis cafe, they have the show at Hempstock every year. My goodness, that's right. I think this is a are great spreading. fashion show. I've got the video from it, it's about 18 minutes of video. We'll have that uploaded as well to play on a future episode. And speaking of the world famous cannabis cafe, as well as other places, like I'm going to reach out to Frankie's in Olympia and some other clubs I know of. I'd like to get in touch with Herb Thrasher as well to reach out to some of the clubs he knows of. We want to add more cities to the F and Normal tour. So we're thinking about where could we play in Portland? What better place to play in Portland than the world famous Cannabis Cafe? That's so we're gonna see if we can get a hold of Madeline Martinez on that. And uh, also, I was along those same lines. I was having an idea. Oh, looks like we got some music coming in on us. I was having an idea of going and taking a Fink Cam around to some of the local Russ establishments and getting uh, a little virtual tour footage. That's a great idea. For, Check out uh, like all places like Mellow Mood and uh, Third Eye and stuff. Um, well, not just the, uh, the the head shops, but the medical uh, locations that are lounges and such. You know, show people they've got options when it comes to medicating. Oh, you know, speaking of, speaking options. of options when it comes to medicating, I've got a little bit of hash. Ah. And also... Brian the, red, Brian the Red on the killer segue. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Fire in the bowl, everybody. <laughs> Have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Let him bring in the beat. Adam Hand of Handmade Apparel produces quality custom designs for t-shirts, hats, and other apparel. 
Handmade Apparel is the official design shop for 420 Radio, The Russ Belville Show, Ganja John, and Cascadia Concentrates, among many clients who rely on Adam Hand for everything from short-run custom projects to full-run clothing lines. Adam's meticulous designs are individually crafted and screened in vibrant high-definition color. Visit handmadeapparel.biz to browse the selection of handmade gear or to get a personal quote for your own designs. Handmade Apparel, a proud supporter of 420radio.org. Marijuana is harmless. That's what everybody says these days. It's fun. It's recreational. Some even call it medicine. But every year, millions of young people find out that marijuana is extremely dangerous. Every year they find out that it's deadly. Marijuana smoke is lethal and toxic. Don't believe anything you've ever heard positive about smoking marijuana. It will kill you. Really? It's really gonna kill you. It's don't 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 smoke it. It will really, really kill you. Seriously. It's gonna kill you. Great cover of the Rich Haven's tune, Freedom. Which of course, a lot of people know from the uh, Woodstock movie, and the Woodstock uh, you know, 1969. Richie Haven's recently passed away, so our condolences, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people out there wonder, you know, well, where do we get this interesting music that they use for their intros? <gasps> That's where it comes from. We just randomly choose sometimes. <laughs> it's a good version, though. Yeah, and I thought, you know, for Toker Talk Radio, freedom made sense. Oh, yeah, because that's what we're all about here at 420radio.org, especially during Toker Talk Radio, where we open up the phone lines and let people voice their opinions about everything from, you know, uh, cannabis to other things that, you know, are near and dear to us. Yeah, I tell you, coming out here to Texas, uh, sir, gives you some perspective. I mean, to go from... You know, Denver, Colorado, River Rock, MMC, you know, large-scale dispensary cultivation operations that are perfectly legal and regulated and taxed by the government. And then you come to Texas, and it's not. And, it, and people are living in fear. They're being oppressed. I, I talked to one young lady uh, who's a single mom, I believe that was part of her story, but uh, a situation where uh, it was raided. She was raided over two ounces. Uh, and, you know, raided the middle of the night, forced to the ground in her nightgown, you know, with the cops pulling up the nightgown, uh, running around the house with sex toys of hers, you know, chasing each other, behaving like, you know, juvenile frat boys while they're ruining someone's life. And it's just sad. It's just terrible uh, to hear these kind of things. I talk to patients. I talk to medical marijuana users who, uh, you know, have discovered like for example they'll, they'll have discovered that a concentrate works really well for them but they're in texas and they're stuck and they can't get a concentrate and i asked a lot of these people you know why stay you can leave texas you can go and you know people you can, like cliff duvall who says look you know you go to any city in texas there's a duvall street my family's been in texas since it's been texas 
right? Uh, people shouldn't have to leave their homes just to get any sort of medical relief. And people shouldn't be forced from their homes for choosing a substance safer than alcohol by choosing marijuana. And that's, that's why I'm so proud of these people in Dallas that are working so hard to change these laws. And people all throughout Texas that are working so hard to change these laws. This is, an easy, is not an easy place to be an activist. These people, when they come out as activists, they've marked themselves. But, you know, despite that, despite all of that, it's amazing how much popular support there is just under the surface. Just under that layer of fear, there is a current of support for what we're doing here in Texas. I, I, I listened to the presentation. One of the speakers at the Texas Regional Normal Conference this weekend described himself, uh, I think he was the speaker for the Libertarian Party, perhaps, N not a pot smoker, but described himself as a conservative Texas businessman and could not understand how other conservatives couldn't see that this was at its heart, an issue that should be, this should be something conservatives are supporting, legalizing marijuana. That it's not about whether or not you agree with pot smoking, you smoke pot yourself, it's about whether or not you believe in freedom, and you believe people have the right to be free, and you believe that go wasteful government programs should be reevaluated or ended, and, and you believe that commerce should take place and should be free from burdensome regulation and, and overwrought taxes that's that's you know conservative issues and so i believe that there is an undercurrent in texas of of support for this that just needs to be tapped just needs to be mined and it needs to be mined in such a way that it it it, it takes it away from the social stigma of marijuana takes it away from the religious stigma uh, that is sometimes attached to it because we're talking about very conservative christian mega church kind of state and it needs to be rebranded in a campaign that doesn't even mention really the fact that it's marijuana because it doesn't matter that it's marijuana what matters is it's something that's safer than alcohol it's something that's far safer than tobacco and if alcohol and tobacco are legal and we found that by regulating them and keeping them legal we do a far far better job of keeping them out of the hands of teenagers and reducing adult use if we do that with marijuana we're more likely to get there's kind of results that we want. Now, nobody thinks that legalizing marijuana means no teenager will ever smoke a joint. In fact, if we legalize marijuana, it might happen that a few more try it. It could happen. We need to, we need to be ready for that. We need, to be, we need to accept that there could be a bad statistic that comes out of legalization. But we need to understand that that statistic is only bad in a vacuum. If teen use of marijuana goes up slightly, but teen use of drinking goes down dramatically in response, then perhaps that slight raise in teen use isn't a bad thing if it saved so many more teenagers' lives who chose a safer substance than alcohol. That's not to say we encourage teenagers to be smoking pot. That's not the, it's not the message here any more than the message of a Budweiser commercial is that teenagers should drink beer. But the message here is that adults should be allowed to be adults and that through regulation and education, we do a better job of, pro of protecting our children and our society from harm. And that's a message that Texans are ready to hear. And I believe that. And I believe the, the activists down here, DFW Normal, all these other Texas chapters are going to successfully make that case to the people of Texas. And it's going to get to a point where politicians in Texas have to think about where they stand on these issues. Check out Sylvester Reyes and Beto O'Rourke all the way out in West Texas, out in the West Texas town of El Paso. Beto O'Rourke, he was the uh, city councilman in uh, El Paso, became the mayor of El Paso, has always been a strong legalization proponent. He ran for the U.S. Congress against Beto O'Rourke, who had been there for 16 years, eight consecutive terms, pretty much a lock on re-election mocked beto o'rourke in campaign ads he wants to legalize marijuana what is what's he been smoking ha, ha, ha. and beto o'rourke lost and that's what's happening all across this country even in places like texas is people are starting to wake up to this and realize that we can change what's going on here by changing the people that are in charge it's going to be 
more politically difficult to get by being anti-pot than being pro-pot. And that's just a few years away. Indeed. I totally All right. agree. It looks like uh, we're about half past. Maybe we should take a little break here because uh, I don't know how it happened, Brian. I ended up with dry mouth. Maybe it's the Texas uh, heat. It's yeah, that's that, it. It's that damn lack of humidity there. Yeah, that could be it. <laughs> we'll see you in just a minute. Stick around. You're listening to Toker Talk Radio on 420radio.org. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Keith Strop. I'm legal counsel at Normal, and I'm the old guy who founded Normal back in 1970. I also recently published a book by High Times Press entitled It's Normal to Smoke Pot. I look forward to joining you at the Texas Regional Seminar coming up on June 7th through 9th. Uh, the, the seminar theme is Grabbing Prohibition by the Horns. And one thing for certain, we are at the tipping point in this country, and we are well into the process of ending prohibition once and for all. Hope to see you in Fort Worth in early June. Thank you. Hi, this is Dan Michaels. If you're looking for professional voice talent for your commercial or podcast, I'm your man. Visit danmichaelsaudio.com for more information. The flame you want, I got the flame you need. Another shot, a shot at the hydro pot. I said, I got the flame you want. I got the flame you need. I said, Do you want another shot? A shot at the hydro pot. It's the P O L Y B O Y. Don't you know that I love to get high? I smoke marijuana. Every day, don't you know that pony boy don't play? I got the flame you want. I got the flame you want. I got the flame in me. Right. Can I get another shot? A shot of the hydro pot. Yeah. I got the flame you want. You know, I got the flame you want. I got the that's flame the pony me. boy from Los Marihuanos. Marihuanos, Los Marihuanos. Yeah, my nuggets, you know what's up. <laughs> you know, Pony Boy keeps saying he's got the flame that killed John Wayne. You know, John Wayne died like 77. What did he die? How much fluid does a goddamn lighter got? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one that's one massive lighter, isn't it? Well, that's uh anyway, that's Los Marihuanos with I got the flame you want. And yeah, uh, yeah. you know, there's well, flames back to all Toker over. Talk Radio everybody. It's uh let's see, we got uh, 34 after the hour here. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas right at the moment just uh chilling after the dfw normal conference and uh, this week we'll be heading out on the road with the fnas uh on our way to flagstaff yep. tucson and tempe on thursday friday and saturday uh you want to get the names of the clubs those are up online at 420radio.org so you can check that out i'd love to see you out there i've actually got a friend who's going to be flying in to uh, the Phoenix area about that same time and going to meet up there uh, in Phoenix. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, or, uh, not Phoenix, but uh, Tempe, excuse me, which is out, just outside of Phoenix. So I've got the list uh, up here on uh, Thursday, June 13th. They'll be playing in Flagstaff, Arizona at the Green Room. And, how appropriate. Uh, and yeah, how appropriate for the first stop on the F Normal Tour. Definitely. And then Friday, June 14th, that's uh, end of this week, t Tucson, Arizona at the Artisan. Uh, on Saturday, June 15th, they'll be in Tempe at the Sail Inn. And then uh, that's this weekend's shows, and we'll update you on next weekend's shows during our next week. All right. Well, hey, uh, I wanted to talk also uh, about something in the news. 
not having to directly do with marijuana, but, you know, kind of having to do with what we deal with in this country. And I'm seeing some folks in the chat room talking about it as well. And that's that uh, NSA, the whole surveillance prism uh, data mining operation that's been revealed by a patriotic whistleblower, if you, you know, ask me. And, and, but, uh, and I was just talking with my friend saying that this is has such tie-ins with the normal legal seminar that we just attended in Aspen, where there were so many... Uh, seminars, there was like m maybe three, four seminars, uh, bit just on techniques of tracking and data mining and, you know, the kind of information that's stored that they can find, you know, years, years later because it may have been abandoned, you know. And, yeah. And, and I think that it really has that tie in, you know, this guy uh, obviously knew that he was doing the right thing, you know, uh, exposing, you know, well, <laughs> exposing this uh it's you know you can call it what it is it's a conspiracy you know to spy on the american public <laughs> so. yeah and and here's here's a, a take on this thing you know they offer all these uh explanations about well you know if it's only if it's going overseas and it's only if this and if, if they really need to do it they have to go to a judge and blah 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 they make a lot of excuses but one of the excuses they make is we're not listening to the content of your phone calls we're only gathering the metadata we're only gathering the metadata well let me tell you about that right mm -hmm. let's let's go back in time a little bit Let, let's go back and think of snail mail right and you know because you know let's think about what the founding fathers you know knew right? they didn't know no twitter they didn't know no Ustream, right they knew mail right and so they wrote the fourth amendment you know, the, the people shall be secure in their persons, papers, houses, and effects, right? And part of papers was the idea of post, the postal service, you know, delivering messages to one another. That yeah. that is private. Yeah, that's should be why out of... I was saying that's why it's a federal offense to tamper with the U.S. mail. Absolutely. So this is, a you know, part of the, you know, the very genesis of the Fourth Amendment, protecting our communications with one another, right? Okay, so... If you think about a letter, right, the content of the letter is what's written on the letter, and then you slap it in an envelope and you send it along. What the government is trying to say to you here is, we didn't open the envelope and read the letter. All we did is watched at your house at every time that you ever sent a letter and where you sent it to. We just took track of the address it came from, who was sending the letter at what time, and to whom they were sending it. And... It would be interesting to wonder if what the Founding Fathers would have thought about that, whether or not the government had the right to access the records of the delivery of the messages in the Postal Service. You know, who was sending what messages to whom? Because if you think about it, isn't that part of privacy as well? Whom I'm communicating with? Who I choose to associate with? Who I wish to talk to? I would think that should be naturally a part of privacy. But our government and our courts are arguing otherwise. They seem to be saying, well, no, as long as we don't know what you said in the conversation, as long as we didn't read the what's in the envelope, we can read the envelope itself. We can track the envelope. We can tell every single person, every single postman who ever touched the envelope. We can tell what post office box it went to, who picked it up at the post office box, what time the envelope was opened, what time the letter was read, right? That's the yeah. level. And, but, and the statement that they're, you know, not searching the content, that's total bullshit because they've had a system set up since the late 90s that, you know, periodically monitors every single phone conversation and searches for keywords. You know, if you say something like pot, weed, the stuff, uh, you know, or like bomb or explosives or materials, you know, you get flagged and you get put into this database where they watch you a little bit closer for the next little while. And, if you know, and they admitted to this kind of stuff back then. So for them to say that now with the technology advances that they're not monitoring the content of these, you know, communications and that they're only looking at the metadata is total bullshit. I call shenanigans. <laughs> He calls shenanigans. I, and, and, but the point I'm bros. making is it doesn't matter. It, you know, it, it, I mean, it does matter, obviously. But what I'm saying is, yeah. even if even if we were take, to take them at their word that they weren't reading the content, reading the metadata is just as bad. That's what I'm upset about here. Yeah, because here, check, check this. Uh, 
check, check this uh, uh, check this kind of example out, right? Um, we're checking on people's cell phone records. We're checking on you know what time they're making calls, who they're making calls to, who the people they made calls to made calls to, right? So the government doesn't. When you made a phone call at eight thirty p.m. to a guy, uh, uh, you know, in the city, the government doesn't know that you were ordering a quarter ounce of weed that you would come pick up later. But they do know you made a call to this guy at 8.20. This guy made another call to a guy who was in a prison for a, a drug offense. He also made a call, call to a person who has a previous marijuana cultivation offense. They know that you and your cell phone traveled through the city and stopped at an ATM where you picked up $300 in cash, and then you drove to a location in the city that had nothing to do with where you work or where you live or where you go or play or, or watch movies or anything. And uh, from that point on, you then stopped at jack-in-the-box restaurant and picked up some munchies but don't worry they don't know that you were going out to buy marijuana right indeed sounds like total bullshit to me there it's just another way that they can track people you know and that the the fact that you know they're all you know got their panties in a bunch because somebody outed them <laughs> makes it even more evident that they were doing something that they weren't supposed to and there's a and there's a they know what's there's wrong. element to this. There's an angle to this that you know when you start listening to uh, Julian Assange from uh, WikiLeaks, oh, right? Assange. WikiLeaks. Assange. I always have. I always say WikiLeaks. <laughs> it's WikiLeaks. When I when uh, Julian Assange case came out and all that stuff was going down, uh, he said something to the effect of, uh, "It's the end of privacy," right? And part of this, and really, I mean, in this world we live in with Facebook and ATMs and cell phones, what we think is private really isn't all that private. It would shock our forefathers. It would shock our ancestors. Yeah. But even in that respect, where there's a, a privacy, uh, you know, a different level of privacy that we've accepted at this time, uh, what Assange and some of these people argue is that in the coming technological era, Privacy will be a quaint concept. It'll be a quaint anachronism. And that the only way to fight the government intruding on our privacy is to just open up everything. Hmm. Have no secrets. All things open. Yeah. I, I, wow. You know, the thing that scares me a little bit, you know, is um, the, the Google Glass. You know, they uh, had some information on it in the seminar. And basically what Google Glass is, it's a little screen uh, on a, a headset that has a camera on it and the, what this thing has is software that you look at somebody it takes a capture image of their face looks up their information and displays their biographical data right in front of you instantaneously so you could be walking through a crowd of people you know nothing about look at somebody and instantly know everything that is public about them and that is uh, i think just a little bit beyond what most people signed up for when they started uh venturing into these social media networks uh you know not not everybody needs to know that you know you were in the bathroom for half an hour this morning you know uh, <laughs> after your ginormous breakfast of <laughs> random food that you took a picture of and posted you know it but I'm saying there are people out there who are going to use this stuff, and there are more people who can use this stuff against you by tracking your patterns, by uh, finding out when and where you go on a regular basis. You know, uh, great point uh, during the one of the legal seminars was about a program called Forceware, where basically you're just alerting the world saying, hi, I'm going to be over in this part of town away from my house. Come rob me, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so it's like, you know, and people are using these applications voluntarily, you know, and the more applications are coming out every day. I remember back when the, an app came out that was a photo sharing app. Now, somebody, uh, female, did not know that, you know, their boss, you know, could just act, I mean, you know, uh, uh, it, it would automatically send all of the photos that she had to everybody in her contacts, including her coworkers and boss. And she had some pictures of herself, you know, um, in a somewhat uh, unsavory light. I don't know what would it, how you... NSFW. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Not safe for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely not safe for work. But uh, you know, and uh, there's no limit to the amount of intrusion that these apps 
are going to ha- you know be able to do and you can control your freaking car now with your bluetooth handset i mean you know connection with your smartphone you can turn on the lights and security system in your house from across the country you don't think that there are people able to hack in and be able to do that that aren't you that's uh, a little bit uh, presumptuous i think you know <laughs> uh, there, there's no such thing as totally secure on the internet sorry it just that's right absolutely happen. not going to happen now um i want to talk also a little bit about some of the vendors that i saw there at dfw normals conference they had this one uh, and i'm going to hit them up they're called pitch and puff got a cute little t-shirt of a kind of a stoned golf ball <laughs> it's very <laughs> cute but their 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 uh product is a one hitter golf tee <laughs> you can take it out Seriously. golfing and then use it to smoke so it's called pitch and puff you can find them at pitch-n-puff.com pitchandpuff.com with the high we're gonna take a little break and when we come back we'll wrap things up here we'll on this right fort worth these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the rust Belleville show you're tuned into the rust Belleville show the voice of the marijuana nation Cast your eyes up to the skies What is it to live and die? The more you mess with cannabis, the more it can mess with your mind. To find out more, talk to Frank. different version there of uh, I'd Love to Change the World. That's the accused. A little bit of a rock version slipped in there. Yeah, we love the accused. Tommy Niemeyer, the accused, donated a lot of his uh, uh, tracks as little bed music for the Herb Thrasher Flower Hour. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Excellent. Hey, stuff. Uh, looking back at the DFW Normal Conference, all sorts of great speakers. Eric Altieri uh, was opening up the conference on both days, and you know he's uh, developed quite a bit since I first met him. When he first got hired from for normal, uh, he's doing a great work here. His his talk was called the Dawn of Legalization, and uh, we'll bring you video of that. Also, Keith Strop addressed the crowd, and uh, we'll have video of that for you as well. My presentation on debating Kevin Sabet, uh, the Goldilocks frame, uh, did not turn out so well, at least from my point of view, because the videos that were embedded in it would not run on. Well, some of them would not run on the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So it was not as effective a uh, presentation as I would have preferred, but we'll get that tightened up and fixed. Also uh, <laughs> appearing there, yeah, unfortunately. Also we had, um, oh my goodness, who, who else was speaking there? I fast forward through my pictures to remember. Oh yes, um, a great speaker uh, on child protective services. Leslie Burgoyne was there. And you know, with all the cases we've been covering, on you know cps and taking away your kids and child endangerment charges this is a great presentation in fact i'm going to get this uh put out on video and send it out to the moms for marijuana chapters and the normal women's alliance because her uh her expertise on this she works in family law 
And at least your expertise for the state of Texas uh, seemed unparalleled to me. So we're going to get that out for everyone out there in the activist community. Also speaking at the conference was uh, C.J. Maestas and uh, Michael Hyde, the father of Cash Hyde, representing the Cash Hyde Foundation and giving a premier, uh, a premier uh, showing of American Drug War II. And, of course, American Drug War II tells a lot of the story of Cash Hyde. I tell you, there wasn't a dry eye in the house when they showed, you know, little Cashy in his in his coffin at his funeral, and to watch CJ and and Mike watch that movie, you know, to see Cashy there, and to see that little coffin and just four pallbearers, it's such a small coffin there. Shouldn't have to see any any child die, and 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 I hope that people get out of that movie what's intended, which is the need to end this prohibition, so that. The, the medical miracles that can be realized from cannabis. I mean, we've only scratched the surface. We've only figured out what cannabis can do as something that's completely prohibited, that we have to sneak around and use in a crude form. We've only begun to find out what it can do. And, of course, I always argue, beware of the can- cannabinoid pharmaceuticals. And that's just to say, you know, we've got to fight for the plant itself, our right to have it. But that doesn't mean that the cannabinoid pharmaceuticals are in and of themselves bad. There's some, there's, I believe there's a lot of great uh, developments that are going to come out. Once science is un, unfettered to work on the molecules, the cannabinoid system, and figure out exactly how to work those receptors and agonists and all that stuff. That's, that's, that's going to be a good development. We're going to see some amazing things. We're going to see cures for cancer. Yeah, I mean, like pe- people like here in town, M- Michaela Comstock, you know, uh, and uh, 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 Abel McBride, you know, who had the Wilms tumor, which I, you know, got some video of last uh, last week at the um, National Cancer Survivors Day. We brought you last Friday to the footage. You know, it's this, you know, it's these children, you know, who are our most vulnerable human beings, and we're gonna just gonna let just gonna ignore the the most perfect medicine that is natural for them and doesn't have any hazardous side effects i mean how do you like I mean, if if you deny a child that kind of treatment i don't know how you sleep at night i don't know how you can stomach eating you know because you are basically condemning these small people to death you know, or yeah. a life of torture from the pharmaceuticals. Yeah, it's terrible. Now, on on uh, completely different news and, and, you know, something happier here, uh, DFW Normal uh, did make a presentation to Keith Strop uh, to thank him you know, oh, for yes. founding Normal and for supporting all their efforts. It and it very... features... A... Oh, Sorry? I was gonna, uh, just was seeing to say, I saw that online that they uh, had a very special award made up for him by a friend of the show. Uh, That's right. Mr. Mr. Keith Box mm-hmm. made up a, a really big Keith Box. Uh, it's engraved on the front. Uh, it says to uh, Keith Strop, the founder of Normal, established 1970, presented on June 7, 2013, by DFW Normal at the Texas Regional Normal Conference. And you know the Mr. Keith Box, you got the top lid, and then you've got the screen, right? On the bottom part where the glass is, it's not just glass. Underlaid underneath it is another inscription of, of DFW Normal with, with their logo and stuff. So when you get to the bottom of the key, if you scrape it away and you still see the still see the logo. All very right. nice key box. Keith was uh, very impressed by it. High class, I say. Very high class. And and some of the events that we went to it was really fun on the uh, Saturday night event is that we were uh, the table that we got was on the stage behind the band. So I've got all these pictures where we're looking at the backs of the guitar players and the bass players uh, of this band just hanging out, watching them play. And again, great bands that they've got here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, met some wonderful people from Houston, hung out back there with them and watched some of the bands play. And uh, met all sorts of great activists. And And the other thing that was surprising to me, not only did we have pot smoking at all of these venues, right? But we also had vaporizing going uh, on at the event. <laughs> not not a whole lot, mostly in the vendor area. And, and 
but just every now and then you'd see a little puff of vapor go up, right? But since so there's so little smell from it, no accumulating smoke, people feel that they can get away with this. And, and boy, I sure hope you do. <laughs> it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't want to get caught with a concentrate in Texas, although I, I did have one. <laughs> yes, when I, left, uh, when I left Texas, or when I left uh, Colorado, someone had gifted me uh, a little, uh, probably about a one gram ball, a bit of, of damage, uh, of yeah, of shatter. Actually, it was a nice oh, little block right. of, of shatter, and uh, it was in one of those little screw-in glass container kind of things. And uh, I left it in one of my suit pockets. So I flew into uh, I flew into Texas with a felony. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> got to be a little more careful next time. Russ, you should know better. Come on, I should know better <laughs> than that. That'd be terrible. <laughs> So uh, that's what's coming up for the rest of this week. Uh, again, like I'm on the road, so I'm going to try to put together shows as best I can, try to at least get in uh, to read the news headlines for you. Uh, if we're unable to connect while I'm on the road, we'll have videos from the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas Regional Normal Conference. Uh, I've got the Hemp Fashion Show. I've got my presentation on the Box Canyon. got other speakers. Uh, Judge Jim Gray, the vice presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party, was there with the keynote speech he was very very well received had a had a great great speech for everyone and and there was just so much uh you know there's so much goodwill amongst the activists there they were so excited so happy to have us there speaking for them they couldn't believe that wow you know national national people are taking texas seriously and the reason why is because texas took itself seriously they formed strong organizations they went to uh they went to marches. They went to protests. They let they lobbied at the legislature. They got their name in the headlines. You can do that too. They That's what this show's all about: is trying to empower activists, provide you with the roadmap, provide you with the contacts, provide you with the inspiration and the education that you need to make these changes in your local area. Because that's the only way that's going. Things are going to change. Margaret Mead once said, "Never doubt that a small group of convicted individuals can change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has." Keep that in mind, good friends and neighbors, and keep up with us here on the Russ Belvale Show and Toker Talk Radio and 420 Radio in general for all of our informative programs. In fact, speaking of informative programs, coming up next, we got the Herb Thrasher Flower Hour. Yeah. Uh, now, this isn't a new one, right? That You guys didn't do a new show? Yeah, you did we do did a new do show. New I called show. you from, uh, I was a little drunk, you was but a I called you from uh, Fort Worth, so I guess I'll get to hear myself in Fort Worth. Yeah, well, well you'll hear what we got of you, because like, <laughs> like we said, you know, the connection's not all that strong, but our connection to this cannabis community, grow, our roots go so deep, so... Yep, just like a hemp fruit, baby. Damn so right. that's all the time I got here for Toker Talk Radio, and uh, we will be back tomorrow with more news and interviews you can use for the cannabis community or videos. We'll, we'll see what happens just depending on our situation. We're doing it live here at 420 Radio. For Brian the Red, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, take care of each other, Tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it.